now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> So we met in uh, closed session. Can I have a review statement? Yes. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, <coughs> compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals to consult with staff, consultants, or other, other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Thank you. Okay, everybody had a chance to review the agenda. If so, can I have a motion? Move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. All right, motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion to approve the minutes for August 2nd, 2023, the closed session. Move to approve the minutes as presented. Got a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And approval of the minutes for August 2nd, 2023, the open session. Move to approve the minutes as presented for the open session of August 2nd. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that brings us to information items and Dr. Kibler. Well, Actually, this is summer programming update. Yeah. So, Who's that? Uh, Mr. Kintop and Mrs. Smith. All right. Good evening, President Schifanelli, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. I'm Kevin Kintop. I'm the program director of Rise Academy and I supervise summer programs. And I'm Amy Smith, supervisor for K-12 Mathematics and GT and I was supervisor for the Gears 2 summer camps. All right, good evening. So we're here tonight, um, well, I guess we're not using that one. There it goes. Um, we're here to just, this is a very similar presentation to what I gave you before we started the summer. Um, just kind of review the learning programs that we had, give you some data results that we have at this point, and then update you on the students that were enrolled in the programs and how they went. So I'm going to start with our Title I Enrichment Program, which is, is our largest um, program that we run. Um, we did have 293 students that did take part in the Title I program. So that was at the two locations of Sutlersville Middle and Graceville Elementary School. The program itself was uh, very well received. We had much better attendance this year with students, which was nice to see. Um, the staff did a wonderful job. The kids had a, had a great time. Um, and we're very involved and active. When we went out into the classrooms, we, the kids were really, it, you'd think when you hear summer school for reading and for math, but it, the kids were really actively involved. So that was really good to see this summer. And then at those two sites, we also ran the summer camps program through the Gears Grant, um, Gears Grant for enrichment particularly targeted initially at our GT students and our GT potential and then we opened it up for the county um, any students could enroll after that we had 196 students enrolled um, that was about 75 more students than we had actively participating last year so it was an, a great enrollment we had 62 students that attended both last year's summer programs and then this year's programs because they had enjoyed it a lot of them brought their siblings or some friends with them to join in. We had four different camps that ran. We had a STEAM program camp, an art and nature, a drama, and then also a, um, oh, and you jumped so quick. Team sports. Team sports. Thank you, oh, Dr. Sorry. Stanley. I'm trying That's to keep okay. up with you as you're naming you, them. No. <laughs> so this first one gives you some pictures and, and um, activities from the STEAM program. Students got to work with robots. They got to do some programming. They got to build cars and then redesign from the motors to something else that would be a productive product. Um, and all of the students throughout were truly engaged in that STEAM factor of design and problem solving and analysis. And at the end of the pro, um, 
the end of the program, parents came in to get to see the students actually put off their bottle rockets and show off their projects and their, run their motors and all of that. So it was well received. Parents were very excited to see the projects that the students in STEAM had participated in this year. In art and nature, the students every day went out and found some topic focus area to build their initial focus around for their art projects. So they had some active time outside doing sketching and collaborating together. And you, then what you see here is actually several of the projects, but those two on the bottom left and middle are two of the displays on the final day when parents came in and it was an opportunity for the students to share out what they learned some of their new strategies and techniques that they did and then be able to really kind of celebrate all of the projects that they participated in they had some phenomenal phenomenal projects that they produced the dance and drama both of the camps put on Jungle Book and you can see that each of the campsites while the production may have looked a little bit different as far as the colors all of them put on a play in four weeks the students learned their parts they danced they built their own choreography it was phenomenal to see both of the centers both packed cafeterias for the performances at Sudlersville Elementary or Sudlersville Middle School and then also at Graysonville Elementary. And then finally, we had team sports. And so those students, by the end of the time there, they developed their own team sport once they had learned a lot of skills and drills as well as rules about how different games work. Then they had to design their own and teach it to their fellow teammates. And so you can see them actively learning a real variety of games. It wasn't just soccer and basketball and football. They really got into some varieties of some parachute games this year. They got to do bowling. And so the kids were very active and enjoy it. I cannot recognize the staff that helped put on these team sport or put on all of the camps. They did a phenomenal job. They planned, they were creative, they were involved. Every time you walked into a room, you saw the teachers and the assistants right there with the students as well. And then from this, we braided a few of our grants um, with the GEARS grant as well as with our PFY Century 21 grant in order to allow the students who were in the morning enrichment program to be able to experience the camp experience as well. And so then the students who had um, enrolled in enrichment, if they chose, they could stay full day. And in the afternoon, then they per participated in an abridged camp version. They got to experience two weeks of a STEAM camp, two weeks of the art camp, and every day they participated in team sports for physical activity. All of those students, we had 126 students in the PFY program, and all of those students received breakfast and lunch while the camp in the morning received breakfast before they were um, starting in their programs. So we were thrilled with it. This is the end of that GEARS 2 grant. So this is currently is the end of these programs as they were structured the last two years. Um, so now we're open to look at what we might be able to do because it was so well received in the community. Talk about your guest speaker. Oh, and PFY, we, w we did bring in a guest speaker and that's the pictures you see there. We brought in the storm guy and both sites, the kids absolutely adored him as he talked about his tornado car and he goes and chases the tornadoes and he showed them pictures and they got to um, hear and see some live videos of the tornado experience and they just were totally entrenched in learning about um, all the different steam components and he set it up great to go through science technology engineering um, arts he then showed a lot of his pictures and how he looks for different ways to change things to make it a very artistic design when he does some of his graphics and then the mathematics so he did a great way of encompassing that steam focus for the students in the afternoon thank you awesome. yeah. Another program that we had running was our migrant program at Southerville Elementary School. Um, this was the Monday through Friday program that we had going on for five weeks, longer than the, than the rest. Uh, we had originally projected, I think, 60 students and wound up with 65. I mean, we originally projected 65. I got the updated numbers after we had turned the presentation in. It was actually 60 students that were enrolled in the program. Um, 
you can see here that one of the great things about the migrant program, it, it is just a, it is a community program in the summer. Like the, the folks that work the migrant program are really invested from the teeny tiny little babies, you know, up to the high school kids. And they work tirelessly and a full day, five days a week and beyond. There, there are folks that are working in that migrant program that are responsible. They are contacting parents, going to parents' works to try to, you know, communicate and help get um, the students. And this is just some per, uh, pictures from their, their last family night that they had during the last week. And uh, as you can see, they, they put it on. I, I think the greatest picture there is from behind the DJ booth. Like you can see the turntables there on the bottom left. Mm -hmm. It just kind of, it gives you that perspective of just kind of what the environment is like when they do that. So um, we're very grateful for those that worked in the migrant program this, this summer. In special education, our, we have our extended school year program for those students that need to continue working on skills over the summer so they don't fall back. Um, the projection was 120 for that. We actually serviced 146 students um, with ESY. Um, Mr. Um, Thompson in the special education office wanted me to reiterate how grateful he was to the transportation department because ESY is not an everyday activity. It's a couple days a week. So buses have to get kids on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Monday, Wednesdays. There's some that have to be delivered right to a particular uh, address. Some, you know, can get off at, at, at a corner, but he was very, very grateful. Transportation did a phenomenal job uh, of getting students there. And all the folks that worked at Queen Anne's County High School um, and at the two sites, because we did do ESY while kids were part of the, my, uh, the enrichment program, but for those at Queen Anne's County High School that were strictly there to get that ESY services, um, they, they, were, they did a wonderful job. The last group that I'll talk about tonight is our high school credit recovery program at Queen Anne's County High School. Uh, we did have uh, 210 students sign up. Uh, I will tell you we had 210 students that started the program off in the summer. They came and collected computers to be part of the program, but they did not all follow through like they were supposed to. We had a follow through that was closer to 75-80% um, of following through. And out of that 75-80%, we so far have 230 plus credits that have been recovered during the summer. We have about six students that were very, very close to passing. So we're reaching out to those families and letting them try to extend and finish those courses off and not let the time that they spent the summer go to waste and have to retake that class. There's some special thank yous that I want to personally give. We had those four sites, Queen Anne's County High School, Southersville Elementary, Southersville Middle, and Graysonville. And although all administrators from all schools were supporting the programs, you cannot help but be involved almost daily if it's in your building. So I'm extremely grateful. Uh, th those sites, the administrators actually just took it on and, and said, all right, here, we're gonna, we're gonna set up how the buses are gonna come in and out. They worked with our site coordinators. I just, I'm so grateful to all of them um, because trying to be everywhere and get everything going just isn't gonna happen. Um, we did have site coordinators at every program this year and they did a ton of work. Um, I'm really grateful for the time above and beyond when students were there that they did to make sure that everything went on. And although she's probably not going to, to say anything about it, uh, Amy, um, reached out much further than just her gear stuff this summer, helping to coordinate transportation, helping with the PFY, as you heard. Um, and that was, that was huge. And I'm extremely grateful for, for the work that she did for our summer programs. Are there any questions? That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. if, we had, if we had 200. Miss Cape's um, student was in the art program at Sutler's <laughs> Middle School. Loved it and all the staff does a good job and everything is great, especially when everybody comes on the last day to see all the exhibits and everything they need. So kudos to all you guys and thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. The high school recovery thing, 210 showed up or 210 signed up. I guess only 160 actually did it with a number. Um, so a lot of them got two credits, or I must say. There were a number that got yeah. two and even a couple that worked their way out to get three credits done this summer. They, so yes. it was well worth it for some of them. It's just a shame that 25% that didn't follow through. Yeah, and you know, it, coming off of COVID a few years ago, we're really trying to build the rigor back up of our of our recovery programs. And so we did increase the, the, the attendance this summer so that we could get more direct teaching with the students. Um, and that just became uh, difficult for some of them. And, and a, a lot of students have trouble during the school year coming into the building and it, and it carried unfortunately over into the summer program too. I think it's a fine line to, for attendance for summer 
because you mm -hmm. have some students that work and so sometimes it's it's easier for them to come in and get what they need and then they're real responsible for doing it on their own but then some need more face-to-face -face, and so we did structure a little bit more this year with a little bit more of the expectation Correct. for the face-to-face -face attendance because you know typically that helps students better but then we lost some of those kids that are really super independent um, that are working or taking care of siblings or things like that. So it is a fine balance um, to find that sweet spot that really works for every single student the whole time. Um, and we did work with students who had some of those issues and if they couldn't meet our 75% requirement and they said, hey, look, I can only come next week one day, then the week after that I can come through. I mean, we were very, very open that and, and students who were close to passing, we we're reaching out to them and saying, hey, let's get it. It's just unfortunate that some, it just, it didn't work for them this yeah. summer. Well, thank you both for your effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Really nice yeah, you know, it, it really is a spectacular update. And your original comment is true. We can't commend and recognize everybody that participated enough, but uh, we certainly do appreciate it. Um, the, the summer camp, uh, grants was that it that this was the last year that they were this was the gears two grant that came gears from the two. governor's office um, in response from covid to try to engage students in a different learning experience and build community that wasn't necessarily core content teaching mm -hmm. but teaching through something else and so that was um, I was awarded half of that with, along with Michael Page. He has the outdoor classrooms. So some of the summer camps nice. actually got to experience using some of the um, outdoor classrooms this summer while they, when they were finished up to be out there and, and do some of their STEAM experiences and their art experiences out there. But yes, we have managed to use all of that money. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been around. Every single elementary school has the, has, is completely, geared, you know, finished up with the outdoor classrooms yes. they're geared up ready to go geared up yes. ready to go for you know the new year with the furniture everything so it's very exciting they, they look fantastic they do, <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. so i i think they're going to be well used um as we welcome new staff yesterday um we were on the bus tour and we were sharing out um you know that hey look at these new ones and it's not just for science, it's for right. all content areas. Yes. So please make sure you utilize them. So I think they're gonna get lots of use through the district, but they look fantastic. Yeah. All right, anything else? Well, we had, I mean, it's, it is amazing. But I just noticed in your Title I enrichment, you guys said you did some pre and post evaluations because you were targeting the, the closing gaps. Did you guys? We don't have that data in okay. yet. Yeah, yeah. Great. That's, no, that's the, not, and their pretest was basically their final um, diagnostic that they received right at the end of the school year. That's what we were working off of. They did take an end of summer assessment, and so now we have to get all of those scored and and uploaded. Well, this looks amazing. We we'll have to look some more grants. As soon as we get that. I know <laughs> it, it, it is very hard when you set up something that becomes mm -hmm. so successful, and then all of a sudden you have no money for that's it. Cool. So. Thank you very much for yeah. all your I'm work. sure if it's out there, you guys can find it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. That'll thank be you. the next outdoor skill is to find those grants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Believe me, we've already been tasked. Have a good evening. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Got to do what you got to do. All right. I don't see any action items on the agenda, correct? No, okay. So future meetings. The next meeting will be September 6th. An open session will start at 6 p.m. And then the regular work session, September 20th at 5 p.m. Do you have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thanks everybody. Thank you.